Okay, mom. All right, welcome guys. Happy Wednesday. Hi, mama bears. I wonder if there are any papa bears, any baby bears? There's always papa bears. There should be, right? Yeah, but they don't want to say that they're watching. No. But we know you are. We're giving you the good information. Yo, I think the papa bears are the trolls. Could be. Mm. There's been a couple of those. Right? Right? <laughs> Just come out. Come out and share with us how much you love the podcast. Listen, as long as you guys are subscribing and following, we really don't care if you're trolls. Troll away. Exactly. Troll away. So, um, yeah, just hit that little subscribe button right there. Mm -hmm. The one right there. Is it there? This one? Okay, yeah. Hit that button. Let's get our episode started. Yes. With a really fun segment, guys. I'm excited. So, normally, Aruj is like the segment queen. And she likes to do all the fun, fun stuff. But today I said, we're going to change things up a little bit. So today's segment is called Guess That Song. Let's get it. I'm going to make sure I put no Drake songs in here. Because I already know she's going to catch up on all the Drake songs. I okay. know, I know all of them. Okay. So if, I, if I start popping and locking, then I... Uh, it's all good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All okay, right. okay, okay. So basically, either you guess the song... Which would be like one whole point. Mm -hmm. If you guess a singer, you get 0. 0.5. Okay. Okay. How long are you playing the song for? Oh, like I can play it for however long. I'm just going to try to make sure that the chorus with the name of the song doesn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's tally our, I'm going to write our scores down. Cause I don't know if she's going to cheat or she's going to be an honest girl, honest girly. Okay. I will be an honest girly. Okay. And we're going to mishmash all of this. <laughs> It's all the mishy mashy, okay? I'm excited. Uh, let's get started. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, let me find something good. Let me find oh, so something Why am I getting good. nervous? You should be. You should be nervous. <laughs> you should be nervous. We're going to start off with something a little easy. Got to turn the volumes up. As long as you love me, Backstreet Boys. Sorry, I just sing it in my head until I got to the chorus. I would do the same thing. And then what it was. We give her the one point. Great choice, by the she way. She gets the one point. She gets the one point. Okay. Option number two happening right now. But I'm still going to do this. It's still summer. Summer high. Okay, look, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Whoa. Whoa. Somebody is an AP Dylan fan. I'm a Whoa. huge AP Dylan fan. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's the like talent. It's there's something about his music where I feel like I can really equate his sound to like the weekend. I love his voice. Mm. And yes, yes, very much. He has that vibe. Yes, he has the vibe. He he definitely has the vibe. He's like our very own the weekend. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, this is a good one. This okay. is a good one. This is a good one. Kahani <laughs> Suno. Yes. Oh my yes. God. <laughs> You guys, she's a music lover here. Three for three, Ooh. sister, three for three. Okay, okay. Let's see if we can find a good one. Um, That's a really sad song, by the way. Oh, it's so depressing. It's so that is my depression song. When I want to be depressed, that's the song I put on. You know, I can't. I can't listen to it. Like it makes me want to cry. Yeah, I it can. makes me want to cry. It's very beautiful. Oh very beautiful. Oh my god, it's so sad. <laughs> In mind, I'm like. Uh, Walk through fire for you. Yeah, yeah. Just let me adore. You. Yes. Honey. You just said the name. Adore? Adore you. Adore you. Okay, you but I don't know who the singer is. Harry Styles. Okay, 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 okay. Well, okay, we I got the name of the song. Is give her the point five Z's. You get the point five okay, Z's. Point five, five. I don't know if you were deserving of it, but I'll give it to you. Come on, I knew the actual Fine, song. Fine, I'll let you have it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, this is a good one. This okay. is a good one. Oh, maybe you already got it. Never mind. I'm going to put something else. Because okay. <laughs> then you already got it, and I can't give that to you. Okay. Was that Maroon 5? Yes, it was. Yo! Maybe. Yo, redeem! <laughs> give me my point five. Back. <laughs> okay, because all they said was, ah. Uh, okay, so I'll give it to you. Fuck, I'm not going to get this one. I already know it. Tony Braxton? Oh. He wasn't man enough for me. Okay. That that was a fail. A That's trail. a zero. <laughs> <laughs> you know what okay. it is? There are some songs that I hear and I immediately know it. And then there are some songs where I just know no matter how you, much I try. I know. Because you blank. You blank. It's okay. okay. It's okay. It's fine. So we're going to do three more. Let's do three okay. more. Cool, cool, okay. Cool. I like this game. It's called White, Brown, Black by... I don't know. Got an Oh. Right? I hope I'm saying that right, guys. Fail. I know, this, I know the TikTok dance, it. though. Oh, you want to show us? No, no. Throw it down, sister? <laughs> We're good. That's all you get. You all get right. The <laughs> okay. So she just gave you one of these. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so 
There's two left. Okay. I gotta pick a good one. Okay, here we go. What's it called? Shit, I don't know the name Come of on, you got the point. Uh, uh, it's T Swizzy. T Swizzy song. So popular. I know y'all are like, come on, girl. I know, I know. Everybody's yelling at me right now. I understand. I'm sorry. You guys gotta understand. I have mom brain forever. <laughs> oh. Come on, girly. I'm not gonna get the name. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not gonna get the name of the song. Cruel Summer. Point five. We give her the point five. Okay, I got, I got. We give her the point five. It's okay. I know who it is. It's just you're doing very well, actually. Uh, okay. You're not doing that badly. You're not. It's all right. That it's badly. all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. You got the go. last one is obviously gonna be a desi jam because we're this. <laughs> oh, that's like a point seven five. Hey, the Jonas brother guy who's married to Priyanka Chopra. What's his name? Nick. Yes. Nick Jonas and. Remember they said Nikwa <laughs> when he was in India. <laughs> I get the point, right? <laughs> Remember what they were calling Zendaya? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> this segment is killing me. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We are, we're back, Pass. baby. We're, we're back. We're back. We're back. How many points did you get? So if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out of eight, you got 6.5. Okay, it's not a disgrace. <laughs> it's not a disgrace. She did very well. Round of applause for Arouge today. Yes, girl. Well, I like this segment. I'm going to bring it next week. I think that's a great idea. And you are going to get I'm very good at music, but I don't know how good I'll be with your music. So uh, she's that's gonna so make, fun. That's look, you're going to make me guess all the rap music. Okay? Yeah, I will. I'm like all Right, but I'm not to your level. Okay. All right, but we'll uh. But I'll throw some desi in there. Uh -huh, that that's perfect. Okay, actually. cool. cool. That would work for me. Okay, so today I actually wanted to read something to you. Ooh. Okay. I love. We're gonna get into else. it. We're gonna get into it. I want to read something to you, okay? Ooh. And then I want to get your reaction from this. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is what I'm reading. It's called nobody's thinking about you but i don't know who wrote this and if somebody knows please let me know it's out of like a book okay oh okay so this is what it says <clears throat> long ago when i was in my insecure 20s i met a clever independent creative and powerful woman in her mid 70s who offered me a superb piece of life wisdom she said we all spend our 20s and 30s trying so hard to be perfect because we're so worried about what people will think of us. Then we get into our 40s and 50s and we finally start to be free because we decide that we don't give a damn what anyone thinks of us. But you won't be completely free until you reach your 60s and 70s when you finally realize this liberating truth. Nobody was ever thinking about you anyhow. They aren't, they weren't, and they never were. Damn. Isn't that deep? The seven-year-old buddy has some the wisdom. The <laughs> seven-year-old had some serious wisdom. She has some serious wisdom. I read that and I also way like, to make us feel like shit. Ain't that the truth? I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I was like that in my twenties, and then she said thirties too. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> but it's accurate. So what you, accurate. What's your thought on it? What's your take on it? I feel like still to this day. Um, I am constantly thinking about what other people are thinking of me, judging yeah. me. Am I saying the right thing? Am I wearing the right clothes? <clears throat> am I trendy enough? Totally. Am I a cool mom? Am I like, I don't know. I feel like all of the hats you wear, you want to be the best, mm -hmm. but it always goes back to what you just read. Am I trying to be the best for me? Yeah. Or am I trying to be the best for whoever's watching me? Yeah. Totally. And also the ones who are watching me, do you actually care? Yeah. Or is it just like the flavor of the month sort of thing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or flavor of the day mm -hmm. even. Like, is it even? Like, they don't really care. They just need something to say, you know yeah. what I mean? To quote Hasan Minaj, Yeah. Lo kya kenge. Amen, girl! Amen! Great segue for that. I think so too. What I is your so take too. on this? Lo kya kenge. I, uh, you know, I always tell other people that I'm a very, I don't really care what anybody thinks about me. And I try to act like I'm like that. But at the end of the day, I think to our core, we all care. Mm -hmm. Everybody cares. Mm -hmm. Even the celebrities that have millions of followers, even they care. Because when shit hits the fan, you better believe they're coming up with those statements. Mm -hmm. Gotta clarify what, what I said. <laughs> because cancel culture is it's real. real. Cancel culture is real. But like, I would say, what's your take on, you know, even before the social media thing happened, what's your take on this whole 
concept of lo kya kahenge when you were growing up so before we dive deep into it lo kya kahenge means what are people going to say yeah. or what are people going to think yeah. okay and i feel like even as a young girl growing up here mm-hmm. it was a lot about lo kya kahenge not just in the small pakistani community that was there at the time because yeah. when we were here there wasn't a huge pakistani yeah, community totally. right and also varied from like area to area so because we were in the rexdale era there were a lot of pakistani people but not to the extent of like Mississauga and Brampton now yeah, yeah, right totally totally i agree with you and so a lot of like the way we would dress the way we would behave mm-hmm. the way we would talk our mannerisms yeah. if an auntie comes over did you ask her for chai did you yeah. ask her for money did yeah. you ask them to sit down if my mom is not there how are you hosting this person how are you taking that initiative so if somebody's over are you in the kitchen with your mom yeah are you helping your mom out yeah or did you run upstairs into your bedroom yeah there are so many little actions that were dictated around this one statement i agree and the worst was it would pass on to when we went to pakistan yeah because all of a sudden it's like your cousins are watching your mamus your chachas your dadi your nani yeah. everyone everyone is watching and saying well you guys went bolay mm-hmm. chale gaye right you yeah. guys all went abroad yeah so when you come back what pakistani values are you now carrying oh cuz they think you're like really westernized yeah damn girl and all of a sudden you have to show that okay i may be from canada but i also still carry all of yeah these. yeah but i feel like this is the thing about second generation immigrants that only we we have this collective um experience that no other generation will have where we're not from there and we're not from here oh yeah that's so true you know what i mean yeah. and i feel like this log kya kahenge statement this like what are people going to say or how you're going to be judged people pleasing all of that it falls under this web where you're just trying to find out like where where do i identify with like oh my who god do i identify with it's almost like you live with like two identities yes you know what i mean and how often do you code switch exactly like for, i think for me growing up everything you're saying is so like it's just hitting like it's hitting the point you know what i mean i feel like growing up even though i didn't really have a lot of family back in pakistan and we didn't really go back that often mm-hmm. um i feel like even the culture that we live in now there was always this fear that if i do anything outside of what my parents want me to do or expect me to do or what society expects me to do then mm-hmm. i am immediately not a good person and i think there's so much shame and guilt in that like even when it comes to like the way you dress, the way you talk, who you interact with, who your friends are, what your social sh- circle is, what you do in your own time. Everything is like interrelated and linked. Mm-hmm. So, it's hard because our parents have this you know um upbringing of them living in like Pakistan, India and other like countries and so- like uh, South Asian countries and it's just it's they have a very different way of being raised up right. whereas our way of being raised up is completely different so how do you mesh both of those worlds together because you really can't and i think the hard part is that when you're you're like a child and you're living under your parents roof they have rules that you have to follow but they don't think of it from the perspective of like a westernized child mm-hmm. they're just very firm in the way that they feel like you should be raised just like i know we would have some of that too um and sometimes if feels very like unforgiving in the sense that you can't be who you want to be. Of course, you can't pursue the things you want to pursue, you can't um dress how you want to dress because it's not in line with what your parents consider to be proper mm-hmm. etiquette. Mm-hmm. And that I think is where you live a dual life because you don't get to be authentic to yourself. You're too busy pleasing other people right. your whole life. Exactly. Yeah. So like it's it's little little things to like how you're going to treat somebody when they come to your house. Yeah. So like how, how what does your room look like? Yeah. Like how frustrating was it when there was an auntie that's going to come over and your mom was like go clean your room and you're mm-hmm. like why? Mm-hmm. Is She's the auntie gonna- Show my room. Is she doing a home inspection? <laughs> like, But has it ever happened that they have come to your room and done a home inspection? Because that's happened. That's happened to me. What happened to you? They didn't do a home inspection. It's like, let me come see your house. Let me come see your house. Oh, and hey. honestly, like, it's like some people. I swear, this is kind of odd to me. Mm-hmm. It's very odd and nosy to me. Mm-hmm. People that come to your house that are like not your friends. and they might be like your relatives but you don't see these relatives that often and they need to like open your co- like your closet doors open your like drawers and like see how things are organized and i'm just like like 
what, what's the fam? What is the what's the deal? Boundaries. It, that's what I'm saying. But then you know when people come over, you can't be like, um, excuse me. <laughs> Why are you looking at my like? You know what? You can't do. I'm that. setting a boundary right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm setting a boundary. Okay, I learned this today. I'm setting a boundary. And then meanwhile, your mom is giving you the dirty look and the slaps. Okay, like how dare you have the audacity to be disrespectful to guests in your house? Okay, this is so valid. This is so valid. It's so valid. Yeah. Um. But it also dictated like certain universities I wanted to apply to versus certain universities that I didn't apply to. Amen. What programs are you getting into? Totally. Are you not doing a bachelor's in science? Yeah. If you're not doing a bachelor's in science, then your degree is obviously below. Yeah. What yeah. Everybody else is. Imagine doing. you said I'm doing arts. Oh Lord. <laughs> Just not allowed. Imagine if I said I'm going to go to college. Girl, I went to college. <laughs> But let me tell you the reason why. I'll tell you the reason why too. So initially I wanted to go to uni, mm -hmm. okay? Either I wanted to go into journalism or I wanted to go into law. Ooh. But then my parents were kind of like, don't go into criminal law because like, you know, we don't want you to deal with like criminals, which I completely understand. Mm -hmm. It comes from like the perspective of like protecting your kids. And I feel like I understand that I'm a mom now. So I understand where that comes from. Mm -hmm. But I think as a child, you're so impressionable yes. that you feel like if you have like a passion for something, I think you should be given the autonomy to pursue the passion. 100%. Unless it's like, I got to create an OnlyFans. We're not talking about no. that. Okay, but it, I mean, if sell, some that, feet, um, sell some feet pics. Sell some feet pics. <laughs> if you're doing that, you do what you got to do. But, you know, I, I feel like if it's within the range, you know what I mean? I think that you should give people and your children the autonomy. Because I feel like when I when I kind of heard that, I think it took me down a lot. And I felt like, oh, then I don't want to pursue anything else. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of was like, I don't really care about school. Mm -hmm. Even though I wasn't, I'm not like a dumb child. You know right. what I mean? I feel like I, I love to learn and I love to read. And I love to educate myself, but, um, I feel like it really brought me down and then I didn't pursue it much. And then I went to college and it was fine, but you kind of feel lost because you're not really doing what you were passionate about. Right. Right. And I also told them I wanted to do makeup and they were like, are you okay? <laughs> like, not like that, but they were like, seriously, that's not a career. Mm. I mean, I made it into a career after though. Yeah. Right. Very but successful at that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It worked out. But to your point, like you're, you're so right about that. Cause I think, and I know they come from a good place. Uh, at least some of them do, but I think it's very hard when you're a child to not be able to be given the, you know, like the right to just make decisions for yourself. Yeah. Right. And so when I was applying to universities, so I originally didn't get in. <clears throat> yeah. This was like a big deal. Yeah. I didn't get into any universities at first because I didnn't have the grade yeah. average. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? So then I took summer school and reapplied. Yeah. And uh, the first university that I heard from was York. Mm -hmm. And without a doubt, I just accepted it even before hearing from anybody else. Because yeah. I was like, I need to secure my spot because there's yeah. no way that I can tell my parents that come September, I'm not doing yeah. anything with my yeah, life. Yeah. Like they would not be able to handle that. Mm -hmm. And I kept prolonging it with my parents. I didn't tell them. I was like, oh, it's a late acceptance mm -hmm. because I'm taking summer school. I'm not going to hear from them. They're going to yeah. wait until... And I was like making all these excuses, but it was because originally I didn't get in. Yeah. And then my sister went to U of T and I went to York. Yeah. And all of a sudden my dad was like, why aren't you going to U of T? Oh my gosh. Why didn't you go to U of T? Yeah. Why did you pick York? Yeah. Meanwhile, my sister is like amazing. Good for you because yeah. U of T is really hard. Yeah. And it's better that you go to a program where you have more options Yeah. and where profs probably care a little bit more yeah. because at UTM, it's literally, they're just trying to like flush out all the people who don't yeah. really fit into their U of T yeah. culture. Right. And I was like, okay, but I felt like for a long time, it was always like, uh, I was always looked down upon because I went to York. Oh my God. That's so wild to me. Yeah. And so for a number of years, I held that. Yeah. And then after I went to York, I was like, what am I going to do? So yeah. I went to Humber and I did a yeah. postgrad yeah. Uh, certificate program because I was really into like development studies and politics. And that's what my undergrad was I in. Right. That. Um, so I did a development studies course and my sister was, uh, had graduated from teacher's college. So she was like already a teacher. And I think she was supply teaching at the time. Yeah. And literally my dad was like, pulled me into the side and was like, Puttar, 
you should be a teacher. Oh, girl. And I was like, okay, but I'm completely on a different path. Like, yeah. that's not what I was thinking of doing. Da -da 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 -da. And he was like, no, you know, for a girl yeah. in our community. I'm not going to lie. The timing is so good. When you get married and you have kids, yeah. you can give them time. Yeah, yeah. You can give your home time. You can give your kids time. So I'm not going to lie. Right now that I'm thinking about it. Great advice. Yeah. Because I'm a mom of three kids and I love coming home when they're yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all of that. But in the moment, I yeah. was angry. Yeah. I was so frustrated. I was like, but I don't I don't want to pick that career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, I he was like, you know, people are gonna be very proud. I'm yeah. so proud that yeah. you know, whatever. And the whole rope yeah, 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 yeah. and I was like, okay, fine. So then I applied to teachers college, I got in, became a teacher. And so then I was like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do now. And I'm just going to like, you know, put my, and I found my passion in it and I love doing it. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But I think it, I, I had to, I was like forced into the role for me to find my passion in it. Totally. Right? Totally. Um, and then, but then even when you're doing all of that, there's so many other things like, can you have a love marriage in our community? Oh God. That is such a low key. Absolutely not. How dare you? So you're not allowed to talk to boys your whole high school yeah, life. No, 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 you're no, no, not no, no, allowed no, no, to talk to any boys or be to any group work with any boys. And yeah. all of a sudden you graduate and you have a degree and it's like, well, where's the boy? Oh my god. And you're like, mm -hmm. what boy? Am I supposed to pull him out of my pocket? What boy? I was not hiding a boy. Yeah. <laughs> right? And so I feel like this is a huge thing that people just yeah. don't know. They don't know how to navigate. And then you are living your double life because yeah. if you have a boyfriend, it's in secret yeah. until he's ready and you're ready to bring him to the family. Yeah. And then even then you're like, are they going to accept him? Are they going to accept him? No kya kehenge, no kya kehenge, right? right? Or it's going to be like, oh, is he like... Does does the education match? What is he doing? Yeah. How many siblings does he have? Is he from and, and, Lahore? And is, guys, he from is this like a is this like a desi thing where like people have to like let's say you bring a guy mm -hmm. right and then the parents are like we gotta do our like deep dives mm -hmm. we gotta do our CIA investigation into the fam. <laughs> And everyone else around, and then all of a sudden, somebody in the family finds out, and then they're calling and being like, "Listen, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think they, you know, this this person is not this person is not. They, they do that so much. They and do. It's just like you got like your like aunt, aunt, aunt calling and being like, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't know if this is a good idea. It's just so crazy to me how invested people are. They're so invested. But you know, when you're that young, you are so impressionable and you believe everything, mm -hmm. and you're just like, whatever my mom says, I, unless. Unless you're like a bold person and you're like, I don't really care and mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it. Which mm -hmm. honestly, sometimes I feel like I give mad respect to those people because yeah. I think to have that courage to just be like, I appreciate what you're saying, but I'm going to kind of pursue what I want. Mm -hmm. That's courageous, especially when you're young and you have your parents kind of over you telling you to do something completely different. Um, but you're so right about that. I think it's a very difficult decision to navigate. And then sometimes you're also put in situations where like... Let's say you go with your parents' decision. Mm -hmm. What if later on you find out that, like, I don't even like this person? Exactly. <laughs> like, I, I don't have anything in common with you. Or the parents that, like, find you uh, a husband or a wife from back home. Mm -hmm. And then you're Canadian, mm -hmm. and there's, like, mass differences. But, it I mean, some people are okay with that, and it yeah. works for them. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of people that aren't, and they don't mesh well together. And they maybe just stay because they feel like they have to now at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. I think it just, that, that phrase of, like, people-pleasing, low it leads to so many other problems yeah and it also kind of leaks into us as we grow older because even though we want to be those people that don't think of, about those things you always do end up thinking about certain things like that you do want to always be looked at in a certain way like that perfect wife daughter mother whatever it may be you know and so it's just it's like very a very like you can't achieve you can't, it's like trying to be perfect and you'll yeah. never get to that point. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's so hard to navigate because it was things like, you know how we talk about the Haram police? Yeah. And our caption under that post was, yeah. I want to do this whole episode sleeveless. <laughs> Tell me how I'm a mom of three and I still don't wear sleeveless. <laughs> It's so in my mind that I, like, I, it's yeah. not that I'm not allowed anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, I am, because it was so ingrained in my mind that, no, you're not allowed to wear sleeves. Yeah. You're not yeah, allowed yeah. to wear sleeves. That now, I don't want to wear it. Yeah. I am now uncomfortable wearing it. Yeah. Capri pants? No. Yeah. Sleeveless? No. Any piercings? No. Haircuts? Oh no. God. Like, it was really, it was a lot of that stuff too. It was those little things that. that it is really hard. It is really hard. Yeah. It's a lot of those little things where you're like, 
am I, can I do anything? Yeah, totally. Can I do anything to like express who I am or who, who I, I want to be? Yeah. Or like, can I, ex you know, you wear makeup to school, it's like fashion show. Literally. Literally. Like, <laughs> I'm just, and they're like, oh, and everything, everything ties back to you're doing it for a boy. You're all, always, it's Bro. always about that. It's always about somebody <laughs> like, I just want to look good. I just want to feel good about myself today. <laughs> and also like, maybe I want to impress my friends. Yeah. That, that's very true. Yeah. Cause the friend groups in high school, like you did want to impress your friends. You did. You did. You wanted you to wanted, be the cool girl. Yeah. You wanted yeah. to have the nice hoop earrings and try on some eyeliner yes. and show it 100%, 100%. off. hundred percent. You know, wear some perfume or something here and there. And then your friends are going to be like, Oh my God. Yeah, but even so after nice. you get married, do you really do all this stuff to impress your husband? Not really. You dress up every time it's girls night. Yeah for real and that's a fact mm -hmm. and that's a fact mm -hmm. okay and i don't dress up for nobody i'm just dressing up sometimes i just want to feel good mm -hmm. i just want to feel good because <laughs> it gives you a boost of confidence yeah. especially as a mom you're like i need this yeah i need to look good today you know for me everything was always back to it's for a boy yeah oh my god there is no boy <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are like but sometimes there was a boy <laughs> sometimes there was a boy and that was also okay too <laughs> I think about it on that aspect too. It's just like the way that you have to hide things all the time. Okay. All the time. You gotta hide what you wear. You gotta hide the boy. Okay. You gotta, and okay. Like I also would understand the perspective too. Yeah. Cause now I got a daughter. Okay. Yeah. So like, I'm also like, hmm. you know, how would I react if said daughter of mine, Ooh. you know, like I would be tripping. I'm not going to lie. I would be tripping. I would be like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't handle this. I, I would be, I would be very scared scenario I, I, why are you gonna do this to me we're just gonna get into this right okay, now okay. okay let's just say no it's not so much of a scenario okay. versus what would you rather want okay fair would you rather want emma to come and openly tell you yeah that she has feelings for a person this person has feelings back for her yeah and like what should she do she's kind of coming for that mother daughter advice or would you rather um kind of like not like you have an idea yeah. that something is happening. She hasn't clarified anything to you, mm -hmm. um, but maybe you find out from somewhere. But now because you already had an idea, it's not such an initial shock. Yeah. And you can kind of just talk to her and be like, Hey, I'm just wondering, is there anything you want to talk about? And then you approach the subject that way. What would you rather do? I a hundred per, first of all, I've thought about this scenario a million times. Okay. Even before I had kids, I would think about this and a hundred percent. I would prefer that she come and tell me mm -hmm. be, and not because I've always, okay. I've always said this to people. I've never been a person that's like, I need my daughter to be my friend. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm her mom. I'm not her friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm okay with that. I, I think when you become that parent, that's like, I just want to be your friend. You know what I mean? Like the mean, mean <laughs> girls, you know how they're like, what does she say in that movie? She says something really, there's a line that she said, but like, I, I don't want to be her friend like that. I will at the end of the day, you know, when kids get to a certain age, you do become friends, mm -hmm. right? But ultimately my job is to be her mom. I have to set boundaries for her. And I think children thrive with boundaries and routine and stuff. But I do want her to know that like at the end of the day, I'm still your safe space. Like mm. if you need to tell me something, tell me, like, I'm not going to disown you. You know what I mean? And I feel like that is something that was missing in a lot of our childhoods mm -hmm. uh, growing up as like desi girls that like we, I think we all wished that we could have had those relationships where we could have uh, been able to ask uh, an adult about like, Hey, like I'm kind of going through something right now. And like, I would love some good advice. Mm -hmm. And I think when it's a parent, you know, that whatever it might be, they will hold your like you know, sensitive topics and secrets and they won't share it with other people. Whereas like, you know, when you're in high school, you meet friends and these friends are not always loyal friends and they go and like gossip like crazy. And sometimes even in adulthood, you don't really find good friends and they will talk about you and whatnot. Um, but I feel like as a parent, I would a hundred percent prefer that she comes up to me and she is able to have that conversation with me. And I'm not going to lie and be like, I'm going to be like, Oh, sweetie, I'm so happy for you. I don't think I would be that mom. <laughs> but I think I would definitely be the mom. And I hope that I raise a daughter that's able to like value herself enough to know what she deserves. Right. Cause that to me is the most important thing. Like always value and respect yourself so that you know what you deserve in mm -hmm. life. Um, and I think a lot of us lack that growing up in this households mm -hmm. where we didn't maybe get those affirmations. And so a lot of us have self-esteem issues. Like I know I, I've gone through that. Um, and so, yeah, to that point, I would definitely want her to come and talk to me and tell me. Um, and 
I think that that would be the best case scenario in that point. But if somebody did come up to me and say something to me, which has actually happened when I was younger, people would say things to my mom mm -hmm. about us. <clears throat> if somebody came up to me and said something to me about, about my daughter, I really feel like I would never be the mother that is like, did you do that? Mm. Never. I don't ever want to be the mom. And I hope I can stick to these words that does my child's basti in front of somebody else. Oh, yeah. Because I would rather say, okay, you told me this, that's fine. For whatever reason they told me. And then I would rather talk to my daughter and ask her what the truth is. Right. I don't want to be that mom that's like, what did you do? Did you, you know that people call you out in front of other people? And it's just like, that. sometimes I feel like the other people want to see the drama. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I would try to have that approach. Mm -hmm. What would you do? If my sons, any of them came to me? Yeah. So first of all, I feel like I really wanted to be that they also came and talked to us yeah. about it. Because I feel like there's a whole aspect of like just overall safety mm -hmm. in a yeah. relationship that 100%. should be addressed, which totally. includes boundaries, which includes like what is a safe space, which yeah. includes kind of like that kind of a conversation yeah. around safety, overall safety, yeah. right? Um, and I think I would also, I'm hoping that we are the kind of parents that, you know, you instill a little bit of the like, be responsible, yeah. take care of that person, yeah. be respectful, be respectful, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. But the bedroom doors are staying open. Amen, girl. Ain't nobody even going in the bedrooms. Ain't nobody going in the, I was about to be like the, the bed, no. the bedroom. Yeah. Be, 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 be bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, what bedroom are you talking about? <laughs> I got so scared. I'm like, I didn't even want to think that far ahead. <laughs> Yo, the everybody's doing a family night on the couch. Family night. It's okay. a family you're night. Sitting at the kitchen table. Yeah. And you're sitting with the dad dads. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Let me tell you. Mm. Let me tell you. It's scary. Mm. It's sc also, I feel like because I have boys, I really would want um Farhan to have that strong like presence around. I love that. Which yeah. he would because yeah. he's he we have that role in terms of us mom like us the mom and dad role that we play in the yeah. home. It's very like he's a very friendly dad and he mm -hmm. loves to play with the kids and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But like he we all know that when are when there are certain if I do the daily disciplining, yeah, there are certain things when I have to be like, you need to tap in. A hundred percent. When he taps in, he taps in. He taps in. He taps in. You know? And yeah. growing up, that was how our home was. Same girl. So <laughs> my mom did the day-to-day -day disciplining, okay? Yeah. The everyday whatever. The chanta here, yeah, the yeah. chupere here, the ju jutti here. We all got mean? it, okay? So chill out. We all got it, okay? <laughs> and, and you know what it was? I was the most shaitan in the family. No, I would never expect Yeah. That. What? You mean not even your brothers? No. Like, okay, so my brothers were like your typical like boy boys. Boy boys, yeah. right? But I was like really shit on. Like, I would just do dumb stuff. Like, and my I would irritate my mom, and she would be so frustrated with me all the Wait, time. It's because you're the second child. Yeah. Oh my god. Second child, so crazy. <laughs> I am the witness. I am a witness to it, but I also Salma lived the same. it. Salma was the same. She was a wild child. Yeah. Oh my god. And it was like little things. Like I'd hang off the 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 towel rack in the bathroom. And and then it would break. Oh. Obviously, my mom's gonna get mad at me. Obviously, you're gonna get slapped up. <laughs> right? So I would do like all the. I was like, I would. I was super clumsy. Yeah. Like hard cheese. I'm just <laughs> dropping everything. My Eid suit. My mom would joke around and be like, "Tumari jisam pe na kante lagi hue hain." Because I swear there was holes and tears in anything that I wore. I don't know what it was. I think it's just because I ran around like a fool and I would just, I just not care. It's kind of cute though. It's kind of cute. I mean, cute. sort of. Uh, spirit. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. Um, but I feel like we had that where my mom did the day to day disciplining yeah. and my dad was like, a dad with a capital D. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Guys, when we call him Papson. Oh. oh, we call him Papa G in the family. And everybody, even my Egypt. kids, yeah. my kids call him Papa G. Yo. There's no Nana. I'm not gonna lie. There's no even Nana. I know him as Papa G. Yeah. He ain't my Papa G, okay? <laughs> yeah. Even I know him as that, okay? Because trust me, he is the Papa G of the family. Like, that's right. it. That's it. No, and but it's good. It's good. It's necessary. Yes. It's necessary. And so, Farhan and I have the same role. So, I feel like yeah. if we were in that situation, like, he would need to step in and do that exactly. And I am all about that because that's the type of family that I had where it was like, just like you, my mom did the daily discipline. Discipline. And my dad is like, for anyone that knew him, he was a very soft spoken, very nice person. But yo, the one off time when when daddy taps in, it's like 
everyone was scared. Mm. Not that he would like hit he would never he's never hit hit us in our mm-hmm. lives, okay? Mm-hmm. But it was just like the voice raise. Mm. But the, what what's worse is the disappointment. Ooh. Like when they say like I'm disappointed and you're just like kill me right now. <laughs> Bury me in my freaking grave, for the love of God. Dig a hole in the Dig middle of this hole. podcast. Start shoveling your own grave. <laughs> you know, like, it was one of those. And, like, I was shook. I like, get it. For all of us. Even, I get it. I'm not going to lie. Like, even now, um, I mean, obviously, thank you. But, like, I'm saying, like, even in my adult years, mm-hmm. I-, I know that if my dad said something to me, that it was like, yo, my dad said something to me. Like, you better check yourself get your butt back in line because you are not doing what you think you're doing. Yo, you know? TBH. If my dad said something to me right now, guys, I would cry on camera. <laughs> I would cry on camera. And I would be mortified. Call him up right now. I want you to cry on camera. <laughs> Call him up right now. They need to see the tears. <laughs> but the truth is, okay, in that relationship dynamic, I feel like it works. Mm-hmm. And I always think that. I think, you know, obviously there's some people that don't have a father figure, which completely understandable. And obviously it's like a gap, right? Mm-hmm. But for the ones that do, I really think that you need to have a firm father mm-hmm. figure. One that is able to kind of put you in your place Mm -hmm. because you need that. And it goes to the point that I was saying that like at the end of the day, you're not your child BFF bestie. Mm -hmm. You are their parent for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I also think coming back to the the topic at hand of the low kya kenge, we have the opportunity to have learned from everything that we went through. Mm -hmm. And so we can make certain changes to maybe not have those pressures fall so heavily on our children's Mm -hmm. shoulders. at the end of the day, if you can kind of take away the lokya kehne and not worry about what society is saying about your kids, yeah. then you could maybe really, and us as this generation of parents, we could really self-reflect on our parenting uh, totally. and create an atmosphere for our kids where that the exterior circles do not count. Yeah, You are literally you and your kids. Let's work on what is not working. Let's do the disciplining that works for the kids and for you as a parent. Yeah. And I feel like all of those, de- that, that decision making is not going to be because of what somebody else said to you. Yeah, totally. It'll genuinely be how you want to parent your kid. For sure. Sometimes when I go to pick up Ibrahim, I'll like hear complaints from the ECEs or whatever, like, oh, he was being silly today or he was this or he was yeah. that. And I'll be like, okay, okay. Yeah. Pick him up, put him in the car, right? Yeah. And then I don't say anything to him in the car. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. I kind of let him settle. If he is being like really, you know, irritated or he's short tempered or whatever the case may be, we kind of like settle down, come home. And then sometimes I have the conversation a couple of hours later. But I think that's good. I, but I will address it. Don't yeah, get me yeah, yeah. wrong. I will address yeah. the issue. I also know my kid. Yeah, for and sure. And I know that when he's tired or if he didn't eat lunch properly yeah. or if he's like not really, he has he has the sniffles or whatever, but I still sent him sc- yeah. to school, all these things. I know how he's going to be. Yeah, right? totally. But I don't want to be that mom. And sometimes I have to check myself because sometimes if I'm short tempered yeah. or if I'm running on really low yeah. energy yeah. and then the EC is coming and telling me your kid did this, yeah. then I really do want to turn around and be like, what the hell? Really? Yeah, I know. That today? I know. I know. And I think that's a natural reaction though. Yeah. Yeah. So I find myself like just catching myself mm-hmm. to make sure that it doesn't happen. Or if I do ever do it, I want to work on that and not do it mm-hmm. and just address it kind of in a safe space for them. Not in the middle of a hallway with all these kids totally, there. Totally. All of these other parents coming to pick up their kids. Yeah. Like I don't want that association. Yeah. And I also had to have a conversation with one of the ECEs who like left the facility now, but she was the kind of um, person who was complaining about every kid every single day, no matter what parent came to pick oh them my up. God, I hate. She that. just had that like in her. Oh. And then. I had to have a conversation that I don't want it to be that every single time you come pick me up, my kid associates with my teacher is going to go complain to my mom. A hundred percent. And I'm like, because then he's only, he's going to act that way no matter what, because he's like, well, it doesn't matter. She's going to tell her anyways. Yeah. But it also brings their confidence down too. Yeah. Because that's all they hear, this negative, negativity, negativity. What about say something positive? Yeah, and it was so bad that sometimes if another ECE was like at the door, she would be in the corner of the classroom yelling. Oh, by the way, Ibrahim, remember, I was going to tell mama that you did this. Oh my gosh. 
happy. Like, I'm so glad you're a teacher. So you kind of are like, let me put you in your place real quick. I had to. I love that. I had to. I love that. I let a lot of things go. Yeah. But there are certain things like this. Other things that I notice is like when I feel like educators are not kind of like bending down to the level, eye level of a child. Yeah. Yeah. That really yeah. bothers me. Yeah. Because I feel like you shouldn't really be talking over yeah. a kid. Get down to their level. Have a conversation with yeah. them. They feel more comfortable too. They're not feeling intimidated. So yeah. even if there is something that they did that's not, wasn't done well, yeah. or it was like, you're trying to correct a behavior, just talk to them. I love that. Right. And when I see that they don't do that, I always address that. Yeah. And this whole like issue of talking, like every time I come for a pickup, you're going to complain about my kid. Absolutely. No, I, we're not I, doing that. I'm not about that life. Mm -hmm. I'm not about that life. I also think it goes back to for me, it just brings up like trauma because you know, when you're younger and you put yourself in their position mm -hmm. and I've heard a lot of like, um, psych child psychologists talk about this too, where they say like, you know, if you're going to call your child out in front of other people, it's embarrassing for them. They really? get embarrassed and they get like hurt and they get shy and mm -hmm. they have feelings to people like mm -hmm. just because they're children, they're very vulnerable and impressionable and you have to be very careful and mindful. But uh, to your point, you know, I think a lot of our um, frustrations come out when we are stressed. Exactly. So we're stressed about something and then we take it out on our kids. Mm -hmm. But I still, I a hundred percent agree with your point. I feel like, um, it's like a great tip to just, um, you know, talk to your children after, because once they leave school, it's their time to kind of decompress. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to raise those children that are constantly worried about what other people are always going to say about them Exactly. and how their parents are always going to be mad and never have faith in their children. Children, um, but gonna have faith in all these freaking randos that mm -hmm. need to say things. It goes back to the toxic aunties. I'm not gonna lie to you. It does and go back unks. to the toxic aunties. The unky unks. Oh. <laughs> the damn hairy uncle. The hairy uncles. What was it the dark arm? Yeah. What was he, what, what was he, he was like hairy? comparing like the the color of. I was just like, in what world? You know, it's just. <laughs> if an uncle ever came to me and was like, "Let's compare arm," I'll be like, "Okay, but do you also want to compare hair?" <laughs> Embarrass them. Said what she said. Embarrass them. She said. Um, but yeah, you know, I agree with you. I think there's just this like cultural thing that has to stop completely. I know it's impossible to completely stop mm -hmm. it, but to whatever extent we can stop it for the next generation, we have to try to. Mm -hmm. It is hard though, because like, even though it's, it's kind of like we're in a phase going back to like that conversation about our parents, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a phase where it's like, we are parents, the ones that of us that are or we're adults, okay? Um, and our parents are also still there, mm -hmm. okay, for the ones that are, and they also have opinions about the way we raise our children, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, let's say you don't wear a sleeveless shirt, but like if, you know, for myself, I'm saying if I put a sleeveless shirt on my daughter, mm -hmm. I know my mom's gonna be like, why? You know what I mean? Even though she's a child. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm like, I don't really, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase mm -hmm. me, doesn't bother me. I don't really care as much, but for her, it's like no, like, modest clothing, right? And I think that there's still a level of guilt that you feel because you always, you're, they're still your parent. You know what I mean? Yep. So you just have this level of guilt that you'll always feel, but it's hard to kind of pull yourself away from that because you're still living those two identities. You're still not authentic to yourself hundred percent. That's Honestly. the truth. Right. And that's the something that I feel like I've really struggled with. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have really struggled with the dual identity of like, I have to be a certain way in front of certain people. And then I have to be myself in front of, you know, my friends and like, you know, whoever I'm like comfy, comfy with. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. And then when you become a mom, that's another identity. Exactly. Because I don't think it's a hat that we wear. I think it's a brand new identity that so we too. take on. I think so too. And when you're trying to navigate that as well, that's when the guilt comes in. Yeah. Like, why are you, you know, when are you going to start good on classes for your kids? Oh my God. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Right. Or like, have you taught your child to speak Urdu or Punjabi? Like, why are they not learning this? Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of times that I've gotten scolded by like other people because my daughter is not fluent in Urdu. Meanwhile, my daughter can read Arabic. Okay. Which is great. Mm -hmm. And she's like a very intelligent girl, but like, I don't think that people think about those things and they don't look at it on a whole for them. It's just like, but when she came and said hello to me, she didn't like ask how I was doing in Urdu. And I get the, I get the importance of keeping your culture and your, you know, like your, 
traditional like your your language alive a hundred percent i get it but i am also not the best urdu speaking girl mm -hmm. something that i'm not good at and mm -hmm. I, honestly I'm, i'm very like self-conscious about the way i speak okay mm -hmm. I think it's really important, but if I'm not, I haven't done that yet, I don't think it's like something that you need to like, you know, call somebody out, like sit down, let me talk to you and tell you how you need to improve on child rearing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Also, let's say she did speak Urdu yeah. and it was fluent. Yeah. They're going to find something They're else. They're going to find something else. They're going to find and, something and else. And you know what it is, Aruj? Exactly what you're saying. I think these types of like this type of thinking that we were surrounded with when we were growing up mm -hmm. the way that it tears your confidence apart girl. i know the way that you grow up thinking you're not pretty you're not like the size that you should be mm -hmm. you're not worthy of being married because your rotis are not round enough mm -hmm. okay all of these things that people make you feel like so shitty about you literally raise a generation of women and even men with low self-esteem and they don't have faith in themselves meanwhile like sometimes i look at people or i talk to people and they'll like maybe they'll tell me like certain stories of theirs right and and so many people don't have faith in what they're doing but then when you see what they're doing you're like yo the talent is unreal mm -hmm. like the talent is insane but like you're just like you don't believe in yourself like i feel like i am very much like that okay i feel like i don't think i grew up with a lot of like the positive affirmations and like that type of like confidence boost and um i understand why it wasn't like that i think it's something that was kind of passed down generationally i don't think i blame my parents necessarily in the sense that like i think i've kind of tried to heal from that but i think growing up when you don't get it you don't feel good enough mm -hmm. you don't feel like you pursued the right um field of education mm -hmm. and so if you did something completely out of or like the ordinary then you're like oh but am i good enough and you're very hard on yourself because mm -hmm. you're trying to achieve that like perfectionist status mm -hmm. so i think that that's something that like it's rough out there and i feel like there's also other things that we are going to that i'm seeing now with in terms of the whole traditional career choice and the yeah. traditional educational path it's different now it is and there are so many there are like the nine to five working hours like people are breaking away from it now yeah, totally this whole like hybrid concept and like having a a side business and like a hustle here and like whatever i feel like people are really trying to branch out and break away from that you i know? think so too but our, I don't think our parents are ready for that. I don't think so either. Nor do I think they can ever accept that because in their mind, yeah. they left their countries to come here for a quote unquote better life. Totally. And in for them, again, there's no it's there's nothing wrong in this thinking. Yeah. It's just the way that they were when they came here. For them, they were always taught like go to school, get an education, get a nine to five. Yeah. Okay. And like, what's a nine to five in their eyes that's successful? Like getting a job at a bank. Yeah. Right. Or becoming a lawyer, becoming yeah. a doctor, becoming yeah. an engineer. If you, if you are a capital P professional, yeah. oh, you scored. Yeah, totally. Right. Totally. And if you aren't, then you have to work like with a corporation yeah. or like any sort of bank, banking facility or anything like yeah. that. And that for them is like, Stats. my child is yeah, successful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, no, I can come back and tell all of my friends oh yeah that oh yeah. this is what my daughter does yeah this is exactly what my son does exactly um and now i feel like if people are gonna break away from that they are not gonna be able to accept it they're not and it's so sad because i'm not gonna lie to you i don't even think it's just the parents i think that there's people our age there is that say things like that mm -hmm. where it's like what are you doing with your life oh you started your own business well you know why don't you go get a job at the bank mm -hmm. you know and for somebody that worked at the bank it's not that fun. Let me let me just throw that out there, okay? It ain't that fun. Okay? And I also feel like for me, um, even though, yes, sometimes you have to work the grind. Like, you have to work the nine to five. You got to do it. You got to do what you got to do. Fair. But I also feel like for the people that are passionate about doing something for themselves and being entrepreneurs, to me, the hustle that you have to do to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. there's nothing like it. Because mm -hmm. you don't get the salary. You don't exactly. get that paycheck. You earn the paycheck mm -hmm. in the sense that if, if you don't work, you know you get to turn off when you come home after that nine to five. You get your free weekends. The entrepreneur life, you don't get free weekends. Mm -hmm. You don't turn off at five o'clock. No, you're constantly going. I would even say like with this podcast, mm -hmm. the way that we're like we need to do an episode on the bts honestly because the way that it is it's like 
it is insane the amount of time and energy and effort that you have to put into something. Yep. It's not easy. And I feel like more parents should look at that and be so proud mm -hmm. because that that's how you know that like, yo, your daughter or your son is like, I don't want the nine to five. Mm -hmm. I want to be bigger than the nine to five. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's amazing. I also feel like if you allow your kids to genuinely do what they want to do, that they love, that they have yeah. a passion for, watch them succeed. Watch them succeed. I've always felt that. Because I am telling you, yeah. when you find something yeah. and you know in your heart that that's the thing yeah. that you know not only do you feel like you have the talent for yeah. it, but you're also in there in the moment feeling like there's nothing like this. Like yeah. this is where then even when you're an entrepreneur, all the hours you put in, they're worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And you're going to look at it and be like, this was it. This was it. But the thing is, I also to that point have to say that there's times when you will feel in your gut that this is it. This is my calling. This is what I, my passion, this is what I was meant to do. But because other people don't know your drive and also other people maybe don't even want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. And it's not that your parents might not want you to succeed. I think for the most part they would, but like they don't know your drive. They don't know your creativity. They don't understand what you're thinking of. They don't know your big goals. You know, they don't see it mm -hmm. because they are not you. So I, I don't think you should have those things so heavily influence you. Cause if anything, if you're going to sit there and worry about what everybody else is going to say about your dreams and all that stuff, you know, they're not going to pay your bills. Exactly. You know what I mean, they're, they're not the ones that are putting in the work. Like you're putting in the work, you know what you're capable of. And I feel like you have to pursue what you think is going to work for you. Because I feel like if you don't, then you are selling yourself short Exactly. in a major way, mm -hmm. in a major way. You got to take the risks always. Yeah. And we know yeah. that with brown parents, it's so hard. It's super hard. It's super hard. And a lot of the time, I want to say majority of the time, you end up just leaving that dream outside just, totally. just to follow what it is you yeah. think your parents want you yeah. to do. Right? Yeah. And sometimes you'll find success in that. Yeah. But I think the greatest lesson, if you're listening to this podcast, the greatest lesson you can take away from it is if there's something that sparks a little bit of joy, yeah. if there is something that you just know yeah. that you, only you could be able to do it the way you want to do it, yeah. really go for it. Uh, Even if you have to start it like secretly on the side yeah. while you work at TD, we yeah. understand. Okay. Yeah. But just start it. Don't give up on it. And I yeah. think that's a big thing that if our generation and the generation coming can yeah. do, then I feel like we can finally see some desi talent. Absolutely. That needs to be shown because 100%. I am telling you us desis. Yo, we got this talent thing on we lock. We do. We do. Bollywood runs the damn world. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I feel like there's so much like hidden talent mm -hmm. that has not been discovered. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes when you're scrolling on socials, you're like, oh my God, mm -hmm. this is insanity. Like this person is so good at this, 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 but they just haven't been discovered or they're just not past that, like that point where they like peak and you're just like, there's so much talent out there. Yes. And I also feel like, you know, I know we talk a lot about, about like, oh, like this, you know, this is what's wrong with this culture. This is what's wrong with this. Stuff. But I think that our culture is so vibrant mm -hmm. and it's just so amazing. And there's so many amazing things about it. And I really feel like we can take ourselves to a completely different level, mm -hmm. especially being the generation after our parents, which were immigrants. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a lot of potential, but we have to be able to take those risks. And sometimes they're not calculated. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to jump, mm -hmm. take the leap of faith. You know, I say this and I'm like, am I ready to take the leap of faith? <laughs> But I think it's so important. And what you're saying is so important, um, especially for the younger generation. And I wish that there was someone in my life to also say something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I could rewind and then play this back when I was like 19. Yeah, <laughs> back like to 18. Like baby Hina. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, when you hear that, then you're like, oh my God, no, I need to pursue it. But, yeah. but in those moments when you're younger and for the people that are younger going through this, when your parents don't support something that you want to do, you, you, you are like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't. But I really think that you need to like go for it. And, yeah. and I also, to this point, I, I was recently reading something where it was saying that, you know, there's times when you don't agree with what your kids are going to ask you, right? As parents, they're going to say, we want to do such and such thing. Um, and in those moments, I really think that unless it's something crazy, like I want to do drugs, like yeah. we're not talk about that. 
we're talking about something like <laughs> normal, okay? Um, I wanna do such, such and such thing. As a parent, I really think you need to let your kids do that. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing in the sense of like, whether you think it's a mistake for them to do it, like an example would be a career choice. Mm -hmm. Let's say your child says, oh, I wanna go into art, okay? And they are good at art, mm -hmm. even if they're not, let's say they wanna go into art. And you're like, no, I don't really think that's a good idea. I think you should go into this. This is a better career choice, blah, 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 blah. I think let them make the mistake mm -hmm. because not only will you show your children that you have enough faith in them to know that they are capable of making decisions for themselves, but it will also show your child that, okay, I made this decision. Now I got to put in the work, mm. whether they put in the work or not, if it ends up going working for them or not, at the end of the day, it's a lesson that they've learned that they have to learn because you have to learn from your mistakes. But if you shelter your kids so much because you're scared of what the perception of other people is going to be on them, you will raise uh, children that are going to be so scared to make any decisions for themselves in the real world, because eventually they will leave your house. They're going to go into the real world and they're going to struggle making decisions for themselves because you made decisions for them their whole lives. Mm -hmm. So you have to, at some point, allow them to fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Allow them to fly. Honestly. <laughs> I believe I, I can fly. fly. <laughs> it's important. I feel like this is it's a really good topic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think I've learned a lot, even from like some of the things that you said, I'm like, I really like the way you said those things. Cause it's so important to kind of follow what your dreams are. Yeah. As and cliche even, as it sounds. Yeah, yeah. And even what you're saying, like to your point where we really need to let our kids make the mistakes. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. I know because you can't help but be a helicopter mom sometimes. 100%. 100%. Right? Yeah. You know, it's like when you see, you know, the middle children, <laughs> the middle children right here. Okay. You know when you see them like on the side railing of your stairs? Yeah. And you're like, okay, that's not the way you go up the stairs. You're going to fall and break your head. <laughs> And you're watching them and you're like, now do I go over there? Yeah. Or do I let them be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been times when I ran over there and I picked them up and I was like, no, no, yes. no. And I put them away. Yeah. And then there have been times when I didn't do that. Good for you. Okay. Good for you. And guess what? <laughs> they <laughs> fell and hurt themselves. And then they learned their lesson. <laughs> But that's true. You know what? People do say that. That yeah. you have to let your kids do dangerous things in, like, a safe environment. Yeah. Okay. And even this morning, like, my two, uh, the like, Ibrahim and Idris, mm -hmm. they're two years apart. So yeah. he's four and he's two. And they were arguing about something in the room, right? And I walked, um, I walked away from them. And then I went to my husband and I was like, so do I interfere? Or yeah. do I see if they can solve it? And he was like, well, you should also guide them on how to solve the problem. <laughs> and like, I was just like, fend for yourself. Literally, I was like, okay, but do, I don't know if I want to, like, I, this was an internal mom debate I was having yeah. literally this morning where I was like, I know he's right. I should be guiding them to like, kind of let them yeah. know and like have open communication. Yeah. What does one want? What is the other saying? Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. And then I was like standing at the doorway and I kind of heard the fight settle. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Sometimes even though yes, guiding is really important. Yeah. And I agree with what he said. There's yeah. not, like, that was a great parenting tip. But I think for me also, sometimes I do want to be like, just sort your own problem. Sort your own problem. Good for you. You guys are brothers. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to like everything that you do. You're totally. going to fight your whole life. That's yeah. what brothers do. That's yeah. what sisters do. That's what siblings do. Yeah. But I think I just let them be. And honestly, I went back into the room and then they were playing. And it was like the argument didn't even happen. So this is the best times, uh, advice ever. <laughs> there are times when you just gotta let it go. Yeah, you do. Just let it go. You do. Okay? Obviously, if they're like, you know, pulling each other's hair, hey, maybe you gotta step in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But you're so right about that. I think it's very, it's easy for us to be like, stop, stop doing that. Uh, but I think I think we do have to step back, let your kids make certain decisions. And I I'm actually glad that like even as like us in our 30s, we are able to kind of look back mm -hmm. and say these are the things that didn't work for us these are the things that impacted us in a negative way um you know like this is why we didn't like when our parents always thought about what others would think before us yes what, how, what would be good for us and i i like that we're able to have that conversation so that even though parenting is really difficult and we're not in that stage of life yet where our kids are teenagers and they have all those teenage things coming up. But even for us to be able to have the conversation about that now is really, I think, a good thing. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's just... I don't know. I feel like Lokia Kehenge is like, should be a whole series because the more we're talking about it, the more I'm like, also what this, this? What this? this and that. 
I think there's a lot of people out there that have their own personal take on this whole idea of log kya kahenge mm-hmm. because the amount of memes that I've seen on this <laughs> insanity okay I feel like we should be playing some of those memes you know what I'm saying um, and everyone's stories are so different yeah but also so similar mm-hmm. so different and so similar and I don't think this is something just in the desi community no. really it's not mm-hmm. it happens with everybody where it's always about what are other people gonna think what are other people gonna say but I feel like at some point in your life you really do have to come to terms with do I really give a shit I know people say you know what I also have heard and yeah. it loses my per- own personal experience too is when we were planning our wedding mm-hmm. a huge lo kya kahenge moment was who are who is allowed or who is invited to oh my wedding. god your wedding guest list and I was like but I don't know this person oh but Thank they you. were like my neighbor when I first landed in oh Canada they lent me $25 to take the cab- I can't. taxi ride home I cannot. and I was like are you kidding me and they were like no we have to invite them because people do have at your wedding yo we had close to 400 girl I had 600 people at my Allah wedding Allah Akbar tell, Why? tell me I didn't know half like, <laughs> 75% I didn't know they were coming up to me and I was just like hello <laughs> and the, you know the auntie sometimes like do I know who I and I'm just like oh. hanji and I'm, and I'm like I got no idea who he is. I got no idea. I don't know. Okay. When aunties ask that question and you're looking at their face, I want to just like murder their face. <laughs> but my point to that is always this. Honestly, why would you do that? Why would you waste that much mm-hmm. money? Mm-hmm. Who cares if they invited you? Mm-hmm. You have to look at your own life, mm-hmm. okay? I would rather have not invited that. I swear to God, if I think about it, in the ideal world, my wedding would be like maybe 25 people. Damn. To me, that's like perfect wedding. Mm-hmm. I don't want a big wedding. Mm-hmm. I never did. I wasn't about it. I, I'm just not that person. I love intimate events and I don't want people that I don't like or know there. You know, what is the purpose? It's my wedding. Mm-hmm. I should have people that I actually enjoy talking to mm-hmm. at my wedding. You know what I mean? Or any Names event. you actually know. Exactly. Or any event. And, yeah. and I know some people love the big events. Kudos to you. You guys do your thing but I, I personally feel like it's just a smarter financial decision Fox. you also get to do so much more when you have an intimate wedding and it's just or any intimate event and I think it's just um you know it just keeps you get to enjoy your event mm-hmm. like does anybody remember what the hell happened no I mean it's just like a blur it is a blur it's a blur yeah but yeah, so, it, that was a huge, I, I just, the minute you brought the topic up, I was like, I'm so glad you brought that up thing because they, that is like, even if there's like four siblings, yeah, they got to invite the same yeah. hundred, you yeah. know what I mean? And you're just like, wait, but like you invited them to the first. So like, why do you need to invite them to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth child? Like if you fulfilled your obligation right on the first wedding, you don't need to fulfill on the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Also, yeah. like they had a bunch of weddings at their wedding and they mm-hmm. didn't invite our side of the family. But now that it's my turn, you still are going to invite them? Yeah, yeah. Like, for me, I'm just like, I don't even care if you didn't invite me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I am not, I don't know why, I'm just not, like... I only like going to weddings in my mind that I'm like, I really like this person and it's really fun to me. Yeah. And then I will go. Yeah. (laughs) If it's, like, any rando, I'm just, like, not interested. Yeah. (laughs) I don't really care. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you get invited to, like, random people's weddings and you're just like, I don't know who this person is. Oh, yeah. I don't know who this person is. Yeah. And sometimes, obviously, you genuinely can't go because of other reasons. But for the most part, I just feel like you don't have to be that way where you have to think about every single person from like you're going back home like 75,000 years ago gotta invite this person it's so weird to me it's just such a waste and I feel like you should just focus on what is easy for you mm-hmm. and uh, honestly I feel like there's also people that like overextend themselves financially because they have to fulfill these obligations yeah. and I, I don't think that that is even a logical way of doing things yeah. I think focus on you focus on what works for you because they will forget about your wedding the next day mm-hmm. they're not going to remember anything they don't care and then you get married yeah and your next log kya kahenge is when you're gonna have kids <laughs> preaching to the choir here <laughs> what do you mean you're waiting you cho- you're choosing not to have kids for what a few you years mean? you're a girl you know what's gonna happen to your eggies mm. <laughs> your biological clock is ticking fam yeah 
So I, I think they might write it on their calendar. Yeah. Like, what's going on? With gotta call Aruj up today and see why the the kid is not in the belly. Like, and then happening? you have one, and they're like, so and so needs a sibling, and you're like, so and so needs a sibling. Then you decide to not have any more after two. Oh my god! And it's like, kya Oh my god! A hundred percent. Lord gonna come and raise my kids? Amen, That's what I girl. need to Amen. Are they gonna do the night feeds? <laughs> Are they gonna pop their boobs out to feed my child? No, they're not. <laughs> Are they gonna help the stitching and the wearing and tearing? Are they gonna help wear my diapers? Those depends? No. No, they're not. No, they're not. So okay? don't give a shit about the log. Don't give a okay? shit about the log. That's the lesson for <laughs> the podcast today. Don't give a shit about the log. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Yo, I need that on a t-shirt. Don't, give a, don't give a shit about the log. And that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a valid thing to say, okay? T- the merch is coming up, guys. Merch coming up, okay? It's coming. It's coming. Um, Stay tuned. But I think I think overall, this was a great topic. It was such a good topic. And again, just like the last three topics that we talked about, it's always like, uh, but this is like part one, and there's going to be like three, four more parts that come. But the truth is there probably will be because there's so much to say on this. Um, and obviously, just like we tell you guys after every single episode, we will post a box on our IG stories where you guys can share all of your stories. Sometimes we'll share the responses and sometimes we won't because we want to actually share those on a different episode. Mm-hmm. So just make sure you guys share because honestly, when we go through answers, sometimes they are so hilarious and they become the best episodes. Honestly, they really do. And as usual, please subscribe to our channel. We have our Instagram, our TikTok, and our YouTube. Please subscribe. And if you're on Spotify, make sure you guys follow us and give us those five stars. And we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye.